Today we're going to talk about what it means for two triangles to be congruent. Two triangles are congruent if all of their corresponding parts are congruent. So I guess the first question is, how many parts does a triangle have? So if I draw a triangle, how many parts are there? Well, let's get an arrow here. There's actually six parts. We have three sides, which are segments, and we have three angles. So that's six. So there's six parts. So two triangles are congruent if all six of those corresponding parts are congruent. Let's look at some examples. So here's a picture of two triangles. We have triangle ABC and triangle DEF. And notice the markings on there. So angle A is congruent to angle D. Angle B is congruent to angle E. And angle C which should have another mark on there. There we go. Angle C is congruent to angle F. And then for the sides, side BC is congruent to segment EF, and side BA is congruent to side ED, and side AC is congruent to side DF. So all six of the corresponding parts are congruent. So therefore we know these two triangles are congruent. And here's the notation we use for congruent triangles. Now remember, we know how to write if, for example, two angles are congruent. We would say angle A is congruent to angle D. And if two segments are congruent, for example, segment AB is congruent to segment DE. And so now we're talking about actual triangles so we say triangle ABC is congruent to triangle DEF. Now, the order of these letters is really important. It doesn't matter the order of the first three letters. I could have said triangle BCA or BAC or CAB. That doesn't matter. But once you decide what order you want to put these in, the next three have to match up. So because in this picture, angle A and D match up, wherever, angle, wherever the letter A is in the first statement, D has to be in the same spot in the second statement. And likewise, B matches up with E, so B was in the middle, E is in the middle. And then C with F, those are at the end. So I could have written this another way, before I do that, let me write it a few other ways. I could have said, for example, triangle ACB is congruent to triangle. Now I have to match them up. A matches up with D, C with F, and B with E. So that would also be a co correct way of writing it. So we have a lot of variations here. How about another way? I could have said triangle, how about if I start with the one on the right? Triangle EFD, that's congruent to triangle so we have to look at this and say, wait a minute, I did E first. E matches up with B. So I have to write B first. And then the F matched up with C, and D matched up with A. So as you can see, there's a lot of different ways. I guess the question would be, how many different ways could we write it? I'll let you think about that. Okay, so that's the triangle congruence statement. Another thing you should be able to do is list all the pairs of corresponding parts. So what do I mean by that? Well, there's six parts. So we have three angles and three sides. Let's start with the angles. Let's list all the matching angles. So we have angle A is congruent to angle D, according to the markings in the picture. Angle B is congruent to angle E. And angle C is congruent to angle F. So there's three of them. Now let's do the sides. I'll start with, let's say, side AB. That's a segment, so I write it as a segment. You could also have written BA, doesn't matter, AB or BA. And that matches up with DE, so that's congruent to segment DE. And then another side would be BC. Segment BC, or CB, is congruent to EF. And finally, we have side AC is congruent to DF. 
and there we go. So it didn't matter the order that I wrote these. I could have started with this statement first, and then this statement, and then that one. That doesn't matter. Or this statement first, and this one third, and that second. It really doesn't matter. As long as you're matching up all the corresponding pairs, so you should have six statements. All right. On the other hand, what if I give you a triangle congruence statement? That's what this is. It's a triangle congruence statement, saying one triangle is congruent to another. I have the pictures. I want you to mark all the pairs of congruent sides and angles. Now, notice I kind of twisted and spun this one around so it doesn't look exactly in the same position as this one. So, according to this statement, R is the first letter, so I know R must match up with W. R is here, W is way over there. But those two match up according to this statement, R and W are first. So I'm going to mark angle R with the same mark as angle W. And then the next letter here I have S, and that matches up with V. So I want S and V to have the same markings. So I'll give those a double mark, give that one a double mark doesn't matter what marks you use as long as they match. And therefore, now it's easy to know the last one, T has to match up with X. Now, I've marked the three angles, three pairs of angles. I still need to mark the congruent sides. I did the angles. I have to do the sides. The easiest way to do that is, well, there's two ways we can do it. We can look at this and say, well, let's see, RS, those are two letters, so RS should match up with WV. So I look at my picture and say, well, here's RS, and that has to match up with WV over here. So I'm gonna go ahead and, I don't know, I'll put, how about I put this mark? And then WV, put the same mark there. Now, I think it's easier, once you have the angles marked, instead of doing it this way and saying, okay, then ST matches up with VX, and then R and T matches up with W and X. You could do it that way. I just like to look at the markings for the angles. Angle R, the side across from that is ST. What matched up with angle R? W, so the side across from that, VX. So I just look at the angles and say, okay, the side across from that has to match the side across from that. So I'm gonna give those the same markings. The side across from R, and then the side across from W. And then I look at another angle like S, and say the side across from S must match the side across from V, because S and V are congruent. So I'm gonna mark the side across from S, and the side across from V. So either way you wanna do it, uh, whatever seems easier for you, um, as long as everything matches up according to the triangle congruence statement. Okay, one more example. You have a triangle congruence statement. Triangle PQR is congruent to triangle FEH. There's no picture. Now, you could draw a picture if you like, and draw them so they're set up the same way. I'll do that very quickly, but I normally would not do this. So I'm going to draw a triangle like that, and I'll, letter, I'll put the letters in the same order. So P, Q, R, and then I'll draw another triangle that looks exactly like it. And I'll write them in the same order. F, E, H. Okay, and then I can just go ahead and mark everything. So, and then mark the sides. All right, and so if you do that, if you take the time to do that, now you can say, oh, angle P is congruent to what? Well, look at my picture. P is congruent to F. So I'm going to write angle F here. Segment PQ, PQ is here. It's got a triple mark. That matches up with segment FE. You know, so it's pretty easy to do it that way. Or, and if you like doing it that way, that's fine. I'm not criticizing that at all. Or I could just look at the triangle congruence statement. Angle P, well, P was my first letter, 
So that's got to match up with the first letter there. So P has to match up with F. So angle F. Then I look at the next one, PQ. PQ were the first two letters, so the first two letters are FE. So then that's a segment. FE. Okay, angle R. So R was the last letter that matches up with H. So angle H. Uh, we got we got E H. Oh, now we're starting over here. It's the second and the third letter E H. So over here that would be Q R. So segment Q R. And finally, we've got angle E. So I look over here. E is in the middle. That matches up with Q. Angle E with angle Q. And so you save yourself a little time in drawing the picture. But if you like drawing the picture, go ahead and draw the picture. Whatever works for you. All right, one last example. This time, I'm asking you to write the triangle congruence statement. So I'm giving you the picture. I'm giving you the markings of what matches. And so you need to write your triangle congruence statement. So you're writing triangle something is congruent to triangle something. That's what it means for a triangle congruence statement. So when you see that phrase, you're supposed to write something like this. So I'm going to look at the mark. Now, it doesn't matter where I start. I guess I'll start with the one that has a single mark, but it doesn't really matter. So I'm going to say angle O, and I know that matches up with M, so I could do that. So O, M. And then I'm going to look at, let's see, G has a double mark, and N has a double mark. So G with N. And then that leaves E with T. So that's one way to, to write the triangle congruence statement. Another way is just to look at this picture and pick the letters in any order you like. I don't know. I'll start with G. So I could have written triangle GEO for geometry. And once I decide the order I want to do it for this one, now I have to match everything up. So G had a double mark, so that was N. And then I did G-E-O. E was the next one, so I had a triple mark, so that was T. That matched up with T. And then the last one would have to be M. So there's a lot of ways we can do this. Uh, generally, you write the one on the left first, and then the triangle on the right second, but it's not wrong if you flip those. Um, but there's a lot of different orders we could do it. Somebody else might have chosen to do E, G, O, like my ego. And then they'd have to match that up. And you'd look at the picture and say, well, E matches up with T, and G matches up with N, and O matches up with M. You know, et cetera, et cetera. So any one of these statements, you don't have to list them all, just one statement works. All right, so your assignment is worksheet six.